Hello, YouTube fan to here. I'm Adam. This is Adam right here. What's uh, up? We just watched the Hobbit. What's it called? Battle, Battle of Five. Did you just? I don't remember the subtitle. The Battle of Five Armies. Battle of Five Armies. So. So that was your first time seeing it. It was incredible. I've seen it three times. He's seen it three times already. Uh, tonight's twice. the night it came out. <laughs> twice in times. one day. Yeah, uh, not twice in one day. Literally, seven thirty. Watched it. Got out at like ten ten. And then went to the 1020 with him. Now, real quick, before we dive into the movie, um, I'm going to cover a couple things. Do you want to go into spoilers, or do you want this to be spoiler-free? Spoiler alert, there may be spoilers. So that means yes. That means yes. yes. So yes, probably yes. will be. Yes. And uh, real quick, how was your experience watching all three of the Hobbit movies in theaters? <laughs> Alright, so here's the thing. So I work at a movie theater, so I didn't have to go to the marathon. Like, the marathon started yesterday at 1.00. And mm -hmm. you got to see the movie, like, a day before anyone else. I didn't do that. I pre-screened the movie, so I saw, I had to sit through all three. So, literally nine and a half hours. I went in at midnight, got out at 9.30. It was amazing. And, like, because we pre-screened it, one of, the, like, the marathon things was Peter Jackson was talking on the screen. That's awesome. And one of his things was, now that you've been one of the first people to watch The Hobbit back to back to back, now you have to watch all six. Now, me, being the person I am, challenge accepted, for one, and I'm going to up it with Blu-ray extended. But anyway, I'm at the point where I've seen it so many times where I am literally in the theater, I was like, there's a deleted scene right there. Because, I mean, crazy. there's one part where it's pretty obvious for me, just because Thorin's sword breaks yeah, out of nowhere. You pointed that out, I was like, I didn't out know. Out of nowhere, that like, it, it just happens. He's now battling with, like, a broken, like, little stub out of, you, like, you see with Shadow of Mordor. Great game, though. But awesome no. game. We'll do review that in the future. Yeah, but let, let's just start off with how the movie starts. How so, it started. If you, I'm sure you've all seen Desolation where it ends with Smog flying into Lake Town saying, I am fire, I am death. And that's where it cuts out, and it picks up right from that point. She was a little bit of a bitch, in my opinion. Like. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Smog was kind of lame, in my I opinion. I mean, he, he killed a lot of people. The he way, a lot of, the, the main complaint people had was how fast his scene ended. So, spoiler again, so, I mean, in the book, Smog gets shot and killed with an arrow, and it happens in the movie. I think the way they portrayed it in the movie, that was amazing. It was awesome, I loved the whole setup, I loved how he set up the arrow, all that stuff, the just the tension of that moment was amazing, I love all that, but I wish there was more build up to it because it, there's about two movies that were basically dedicated to this dragon mm. and then the third movie is like toothpick and he said well i mean that, that was the whole point the first movie was you know build up for the whole trilogy in general mm -hmm. the second was the build up of taking back elabor and killing smog and you know i think that open up the battle of five armies with the death of the smog literally 15 minutes in i think this was great I know that that wasn't the focus of it. I just I don't know. I feel like there should have been. I mean, if if you put it this way, or if they put thirty more minutes onto the whole smog scene, how much would that take away from the actual battle? Just keep it that long. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> three how, and a half hours. Is was the movie three hours? Uh, the movie's two and a half. Make it three. Honestly, I did not feel its length. No, surprisingly, I like I, I watched them back to back, and I did not feel its length. I, I didn't feel the movie's length. A lot of the other ones, I'm gonna say, the original Lord of the Rings, I love them to death, but you feel the only one where I can truly feel the length with is Unexpected Journey. That's because it's three hours and eighteen minutes. That's the only one I can feel the length of. I really enjoyed that. I haven't seen it out of theaters. Bear that in mind. I've only seen it in theaters, and a lot of people complained how slow it was. The build up. But I loved it. If you like I everyone everyone who complained about that, go rewatch the fellowship. Yeah. The Fellowship the Ring is Like yes, there long. there's there's a bigger fight scene in Fellowship with the Mines of Moria, but overall, it's all build up. Who plays Bilbo again? Martin Freeman. I, I feel he was a lot better lead than Elijah Wood? Yes. Elijah to an Wood, extent. To an they're different characters. He was he was a lot more whiny. Well that, that's the whole point. Than Bilbo, but Bilbo, I don't know, seemed less courageous than beginning because it seemed like oh, there's a, there's a scene where Bilbo out of nowhere just starts fucking killing shit. Oh yeah, I was like, what the fuck? 
He's in the middle of, like, a giant orc army and he's just stabbing shit. It's weird, yeah. I, I was thinking in that moment, when did he learn to fight? Because you've never seen him ever learn how to fight. He's been a Bilbo in his... Like, he's well, he, he fought a little bit at the end whole. of the, the first movie. He didn't really... I wish they maybe you'd shown, like, a little bit of training him. Like, I don't need, like, a whole montage from, like, the 80s where it's got the music I, going. I can see that. And he's running upstairs. I just need a little bit of, hey, this is how you hold the sword... This is how you hit stuff. This is how you dodge. I mean, they did that with the, the men army a little bit. When the elves show up, you see it. Yeah, they did a little bit. All right, but uh, anyway, getting back to the movie itself, they did an amazing job with finishing off side stories, and they did it relatively quickly, so most of the movie was the Battle of Five Armies. I mean, they, they, they yeah. fixed the Gandalf storyline a like, little bit after uh, Smaug died. Um, the... Fucking Tariel and Keeley thing, they finished pretty well. Amazing movie. The movie flowed really well, too. Oh, it did. There wasn't a part where I was like, damn, what, what's happening right now? At first, however, I don't know if the other movies, were they in 60 frames? Mm-hmm. HFR. Maybe it's, it's the just, high frame rate. Maybe it's just because it's been a long time since I've seen a movie in HFR. It felt well, you, like... The, they're the only movies in HFR. Well, there you go. It felt like they were, like, fast-forwarding it. Like I mean, again, that's that's a lot of people it. problem have is because they look a little bit more cartoony because you can see so much detail. So you can see when something's fucked up. You can see CGI as well. Yeah, I mean, but Peter Jackson's always had a thing where he's CGI-oriented. I mean, he kind of, like, Gollum himself, mocap and everything. There were a... Well, he was mocap, but he was also... Like, he was CGI, but he wasn't CGI at the same time. I mean, I mean nice. with uh, Azog and Bolg, they weren't initially that CGI'd. But when they when they did it and they had the actor doing everything, it wasn't like intimidating enough. Ah, just I liked the original trilogy and the fact that all the orcs weren't CGI. It looked a lot better in my opinion. It, it looks better, it, but I mean the it, outcome's still the same. It sometimes I felt like I was watching a video game. I mean, I mean, video games are getting a lot more advanced. They're getting closer to movies. But I'm, when I'm going to see a movie, I want to see a movie. I don't want to see video game cinematics, which I did feel like some of the scenes... A little bit, yeah. Like the ghosts, I felt like it was a video game. Like mm -hmm. They all looked CGI. Great scene, but yeah. I mean, it was a great scene. I loved it. The pacing was great and everything. The camera work was great. It wasn't shaky. It wasn't throwing lights in your eyes. You could see what was happening in the battle. But, but I can see, yeah. The, the but ghosts... It, it was like a video game. I mean... No, no, no. I'll 100% give you that. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I feel like, I know some were needed, I mean, for, like, giant armies, you're gonna need CGI, but if they had maybe, like, a group of people, and then just cloned that group of people, and then maybe had them doing different things, yeah. maybe it looked more realistic, I don't it was still a great movie. I mean, the the, the stuff that, like, we're, we're talking about right now is very minute stuff in the movie in general. This is stuff where, like, if you watch it once, you should be, like, kind of pass over it, but... I was pointing out half the shit I saw, and was like, haha. <laughs> like, there's a part where all the elves draw their bows at once, and then Thrand Thandriel talks, and then the frame in the background's just paused. And it, <laughs> it I, I didn't funny. even notice, even when you pointed it out, I think I missed it. I don't think they yeah, should be Yeah, no, it, they, it's two shots of them, and they're all just like this, and the, you can just tell it's it's paused. It's paused, okay. It's, it's great, funny. but... But he, he's seen it now. Three times. Three times in, Within what, two, two days? days? Yeah. So... Unless you see the movie three times in two days, you're not going to notice these things. Be a real fan. I'm really hoping that people watch the movie before watching this. Let me put spoilers. We said on. spoiler, so hopefully... Alright, now moving moving it. on, so... The Battle of Five Armies. How'd you like oh. the start of it? Where the, the standoff between the dwarves hiding in the mountain, that the was elves, cool. men, and then the other dwarves showing up. I was I was wondering what was going to happen, because I, I didn't read the books. Um... I was wondering what was going to happen, and I thought they were just going to get attacked from behind and just get obliterated, something like that. And then seeing... Now, one part was kind of weird, because you see all the dwarves running towards the orcs that are running, and they mm -hmm. set the shields and everything, and then you don't see the elves move at all. You don't see them. They're really far away, and the, the dwarves are really far away, set up the shields, and then all of a sudden, like, right as, so as soon as Bilbo asks, like, are the elves going to help? And then all of a sudden they jump over. Yeah, the I mean, that, like, that wait part, a minute. if they, just... they they should have timed that a little bit better. But again, in the grand scheme of things, amazing action shot. Like the dwarves are all posted up like and they just jump Sparta over. style where shields and everything and lances. And then right before they're about to push, elves just jump over yep. and waves. It was cool. It was awesome. 
but it was just like what happened. Yeah, there, there's some parts where I mean it's it's gonna happen with that much CGI. And you started to see the. So what did you feel about the transformation of Oak and Shield? Okay, you... so Thorin, basically, I mean, if you guys have read the books or any of the EU, uh, um, fuck. Thrain? Not Thrain. Thror, who is, um, Thorin's grandfather, basically has his entire gold hoard and drives himself mad with greed and gold. I mean, that's what dwarves are known for, is they literally thrive over gold. But it drove him insane, and the second Thorin gets into Elavor and sees the massive horde, it just slowly starts driving him insane. And so Lake Town's destroyed, and if you guys haven't seen the Unexpected Journey Extended Edition, there's a scene where uh, Thranduil and a bunch of elves come up and they want a box that has the the Stones of Starlight. The yeah, yeah, yeah. The so, mm -hmm, and they denied it. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they were there in the first place, because they wanted their fucking So it was jewels. only an extended edition. Yes. Unfortunately, that's, I don't know why they cut that, because it's a like really a pivotal huge, part. Yeah. yeah. Like, if you're watching this third movie and you haven't seen the extended edition, you'd be like, why do the elves give a shit about dinosaurs? I mean, they, they mentioned it a little bit in the second one, when they're captured by the elves. But other than that... They didn't really... Yeah, I mean, it should, should have been a little bit more. But anyway, so... Um, Bard comes up and asks for, for his money, because the town's destroyed and they helped mm -hmm. them in to begin with. And you can just see Thorn just ticking, just greed takes over, he doesn't want to, he backs out of his word, basically. I feel like, I know his followers were loyal to him and everything, but I feel like they could have done more. They could have done more, but I mean, at that point he was king. He was king and everything, but he was still their friend. You know, he, he they brought them to that point, and he was king only over them, if you think about it, at this point. There's no mm. other dwarves around. It's just him and. Well, them. I mean, the the second, well, when the other dwarves come, the iron, the iron fist mm -hmm. dwarves, that raven. That's what he sent. And that's how they came. He basically sent a message, um, and that's the whole Arkenstone because whoever holds that is king over all the seven dwarf lands. So when Bilbo was holding the Arkenstone, he was king. <laughs> Technically, I mean, he wasn't. It's it's Durin's bloodline, which was Thorin, Keely, and Feely. The last three, and uh, I mean the Arkansas more of a symbol. Yeah, exactly. It, it's not actually. Like, mm -hmm. It's not out. like it's not like the crown or anything. It's it's a stone. Okay, so now the heart of the mountain. What exactly? Now is the Arkansas stone kind of like the ring and the fact that it, it corrupts you, or was it just no, the no, no? Gold? That was the gold. That was the yeah. gold. Mm -hmm. Now why was the gold corrupt? Uh, the gold wasn't corrupt themselves, but dwarves are so like, jewel-hungry and everything, that that much gold literally drove Thorin crazy. Okay, so how come none of the other dwarves were affected? Uh, more pure of heart, really. I mean, again, I guess that, in its sense, is more like the ring, where you can kind of fight it. Okay. That's why that line with Gandalf, where most people succumb to the amount of gold, but some people don't, like, looking at mm -hmm. Bilbo. Bilbo was a bamf in this movie. Yeah, he was. And he never succumbed to the ring, either, just because he was so pure of heart. Is that why... Uh, he did at the end. He did at the end, but... But again, that's just segueing into the Lord of the Rings itself. I don't know, it also seemed like he did later, uh, earlier on in the second film, mm -hmm. when he thinks he loses it. Yeah, but and he's just going yeah, crazy. Yeah. And, I mean, I that's just the power the ring has. I wish Gollum was in the trilogy more. I'm glad he wasn't overused, but Thank I wish... Thank God. I wish I would've saw him a little bit more. Like... Now... How is he Gollum already? I thought he wasn't Gollum till like, a lot later on. Well, I mean, okay, so the, the Hobbit happens 60 years before the events of Lord of the Rings. At that point, Gollum was, like, 440 years old. Oh, because... Oh, because they, they, they described the ring giving him an unnatural yeah. life. Okay. Okay, I see. So when, when he doesn't have the ring, why is he not dead, though? Because his life... So he gets the ring when he's, like, 60, I think, and for uh, a Hobbit, that's not too old. Okay. So he gets it... And then basically at that point, after he loses it, he doesn't start aging specifically because his heart is still after the ring. Does that make sense? So it's just the, the heart yeah. longing mm -hmm. for the ring yep. that keeps him alive? The whole precious thing, yeah, exactly. Oh, it doesn't okay. keep him alive because he, he loses it and he starts But fading. he wasn't in this film at all? No, he was not in the in was Battle of Final Fantasy. No, he was not. So he was just mentioned in the first one? And then no, he, he had a whole scene Yeah, he had this whole one. scene with the riddle and everything. And then he's done. But then he's just done? Yeah. That's kind of weird. You'd think he would have followed the ring a little bit more. Exactly, but I mean, well, again, leading into the movies of Lord of the Rings. Okay. I just You're right. You know what? There should have been at least a couple more scenes. Exactly. I would have, I'd have liked him to like appear in the second one, 
Not not like a full thing. I mean, the first just, the fellowship, all you see of him is climbing a ladder. Yeah. But I mean, it's it's there. You know, he's there. He's going after the ring. But I loved it. And then okay, so further into the battle, things are going shit. Finally, the dwarves of Elabor come out. Thorin snaps out of his shit. Which I... Why did you feel about that scene? I love that scene. That was awesome. I love the portrayal of... Madness and... The madness and the gold, the hallucinations and all that. That was really cool. Liked that a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, that, I was just... That was a great transformation. I'm really glad they didn't do the very cliche and stereotypical look in the mirror, yeah. have the mirror talk to you, and then... Oh, I need to fight this and break the mirror, which is some. No, no, it was really cool. I mean, the end, the end of that entire scene is he has a crown on his head and he throws it on the floor, it. Yep. on the solid gold floor that was where they tried to drown Smaug, but besides and then, the point. And the gold was drowning him. Yeah. Which was really cool. And then he just kind of realizes, what the fuck am I doing? I've backed out on everything I've ever, like, realized or thought I, my integrity, basically. And he went, he went through all the different things that people said to him. And mm -hmm. That was great. And they didn't have to show... They just had him with it in his head. Yeah, they didn't. They didn't show, show like the little the small picture in the right and everything. Thank God. Yeah, they, I think they did a great job with that scene. Exactly. They they did it perfectly. They didn't, you know, use any cliches. They did it original. I liked it a lot. Now, one scene that actually happened a little bit earlier, no, quite a bit earlier, with Gandalf, and I don't remember their names at all. I'm so terrible with names. What's the Lady of Light? What's Galadriel? It? Yeah. Galadriel, Saruman, and Radagast. What did you feel about that weird hallucination thing? What was that? What was going on there? Oh, where she, like, totally snaps? I, I know she snapped in the original trilogy, but what exactly... I don't think it's that, ever that is, really explained. That is Galadriel's power. What is her power? So, you know the Light of Elendi, which she gives Frodo in the first movie and yeah. he uses it in the third? She can basically take hold of that, and she basically... Spoiler... Where Sauron's, like, spirit, the whole eye thing. So she basically banishes it, and then it gets sent into Mordor, again, segueing into the movie, movies. You know, they didn't show her powers really much in the first... I mean, again, when she snaps and the whole, like, blue glow thing where they did the same thing. But I felt it was awesome actually seeing her powers. Same with Saruman. You actually see his powers other than Ian McKellen going in circles. <laughs> as much as that seems awesome. That was hilarious. <laughs> that was what hilarious. would make this good? Let's spin him in circles upon you. Spin him, it'll be hilarious. Um, now, oh, I was gonna say something. So that that was her power in the the glass thing. Mm -hmm. So she just gives her power. Well, not not all of it. I mean, because again, she didn't need it. Where she, like, Gandalf's basically about to get killed by that random orc. Okay. And she does the snap thing. I'm guessing there's a deleted or extended scene in there. Okay. I'm gonna say that's. Ooh, probably I remember it. what I was gonna say. Um, remember when. Remember when Hugo Weaving says... <laughs> Elrond? <laughs> yes. You're very bad at names. I'm really bad at names. There's a lot of different yeah, names Yeah, no, there, there is, there is. I didn't read the books. If you read the books, it'd probably be a lot easier. Just Not because, really. No? You, after watching the movie three times, it's probably a lot easier. Um, <laughs> after seeing all of them and directing a play and reading all the history of middle Earth, There you yes. go. But anyway, so, what's your question? Now, Elrond says that we should get him while he's in... Um, like the, Mordor, the, while the while the spirits of Mordor, but then the movie just ends. You know, like it's all happening. yeah. That that Why whole part of the storyline just kind of stops. Why? Um. Well, because Saruman said he was going to handle it, which I'm guessing he oh, goes and then he gets corrupted. Ah, I wish they'd show. Do they ever show how he gets corrupted? No, I mean they they show a minor of it, like when he has the orb, he starts talking to Saruman. Ah, but I want to or to Sauron and. I really want to see how he gets corrupted. Is it ever explained? Oh, yeah. Can you explain it to the audience here, what happened? Okay, so, I, I mean, again, I don't know what they were really doing with the Hobbit part. Because um, he's in he's in his eyeball form, but he's still... He's more visible than he is in Lord of the Rings, where he can kind of take his own form still. Yeah, he, he was the... the it, it was an awesome scene. hope you don't have epilepsy, because... You, I mean, you will have a seizure. I watched it three times and I was like, damn, what if someone has epilepsy? There's no warning for this shit. Yeah. Don't it's do just red. This it's red and black flashes over and over and it over was again. Tense. It was but cool. I'm guessing what happens is he goes to Mordor and sees that they've already started building and he just gets talked into join us or die. Because his Isengard is right next to Mordor. Right? It's, oh. it's on the brink. So Now, I'm what is Isengard? Is it just that tower? Yeah. Why does he just go to a different tower? 
because well, he's a wizard tower. There's five wizards. There's Radagast, Gandalf, Saruman. Radagast and... doesn't have a tower. No, he has a house. Well, Gandalf doesn't have a tower either. Why is he not in the original trilogy? Radagast? Because he's not that well explained. He was more off the EU than the actual book. I mean, again, The Hobbit's this big of a book, whereas Lord of the Rings, you actually have three full books. What's the EU again? The EU, the Extended Universe. Explain to them. So, Tolkien started writing the history of the Middle Earth, which is some ridiculous amount of pages, but after he died, his son finished it. It basically goes through and tells all the stories that weren't fully toward, like, with the backstories of Lord of the Rings. So, it goes through, like, Radagast is from the EU. Okay. So, he that's where he came from, and that's where they grabbed a lot of the material for The Hobbit. Okay, so the... The reason it's three movies is because it's not taken just from that one book. Exactly, yeah. It's, it's, it's taken out of the Extended that. Universe, it's taken from the History of Middle-Earth. How big is the Extended Universe? Is it like a book that's like pretty thick? Yeah, it's, it's huge. So that's, so all the people you can, are you can find it online. oh, they took this little book and turned it into three movies to make money. No, they didn't. Yeah, most of the people complaining are saying that uh, they got money hungry and that it doesn't follow the original book. Fuck off, please. See, no, nobody, not even your, your ticket taker guy at the front entrance to the movie even understood that. He, in fact, he was even complaining. Like, he's, like, they took a book. And I didn't even explain this to him. Like, it's not just... Yeah, book, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, 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 it's a lot. I mean, you can't make nine, nine and a half hours out of, like, a 150-page book. No, instead they took from the extended universe and kind of filled in those gaps. I mean, the Battle of Five Armies is loosely in um, The Hobbit. I mean, it's, it's in there. But it's not as much as it was. Azog is actually in the EU. So that, that whole storyline is there. It's not like they just like, Oh, it seems like a good idea. No, it, there's a whole story behind it. And they explained it pretty well. Like I like the Azog storyline, the Bulk storyline. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah, I I liked all of it. I liked this movie just quite a bit. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm going to watch it again pretty soon. I'll drag um, you along again. I'm seeing it again tomorrow night. Three. We watched it in 3D. Mm-hmm. Um... You don't need to watch it in 3D. I would say it looks better in 3D. It, it does. With the high frame rate. It look really nice with the frame rate. There, I noticed with a lot of 3D movies, there's a lot of blur with the action and everything. This one didn't have No, it was, much. again, um, that might be part of all the CGI, but the movement was great. There wasn't, like, lag or anything like Even that. Even the actors, yeah. Yeah, exactly. It just looked really good. It looked amazing. All right, so uh, let's get into the ending. Do you want to talk about the fight ending or the actual ending of the movie? Do you want to leave the fight ending out? Well, All right, anyway. It. It'll skip it. Watch the movie. It's just you need to see the ending for yourself. All right, so starting off, so they're basically Thorin, Keely Feely, and Dwalin go up to try to kill Azog, who's, like, leading the armies with some cool uh, flag stuff. I didn't, That was... Pretty awesome. I didn't even think about that. The flags? What do you mean? Like where they're signaling? The signals, yeah. Yeah, 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 that, yeah. that was pretty sweet. I was, I was thinking about that. Like, that's actually really good for, I mean, they're like orcs and they're supposed to be evil, but... There's orcs and not. goblins. I liked how the goblins were basically acted as scouts, as distractions mm -hmm. and all of a sudden... They were mercenaries, if yeah, you don't remember. Yeah. So they were actually paid to go out... Mm -hmm. To die. And get slaughtered. <laughs> so they weren't actually really paid. It, there's, a, there's a really funny part where... Uh, they're like, oh, it's Goblin Mercenaries, about a hundred of them, and he's like, ah, just go, we got it. <laughs> you just keep going on, we'll take care of them, there couldn't be a hundred or more than that. But anyway, so Azog so disappeared out of the, the watchtower, basically, and Thorin sends Keely and Feely to go look out. He tells them specifically, don't engage anything, if you see anything, mm -hmm. come right back. Mm -hmm. And then at that point, Bilbo appears, because he got news from, um, Legolas. Using that, the uh, ring. Yes, using the ring, he pops out of nowhere, it looked really cool. It was awesome. Uh, pops out of nowhere and tells them that a whole other army's coming and that they need to get out of here. Thorne's like, yeah, I agree. Dwalin still wants to fight and kill Azog. So they're trying to get Keely and Feely back, and right at that point, you see at the top of the watchtower, Azog comes out holding Feely and just stabs him. Just stabs him. And I felt really bad at this part, just because, like, there's no... Well, I'll get to it at the end, but... It felt like Gears of War again. <laughs> God damn it. At the so... end of Gears of War 1, that's what happened. So, Feely's body <laughs> falls out, and Keely starts freaking out because it's his dead brother, and it lands right in front of him. Mm -hmm. So, he goes on a fucking war tirade. And at this point, Thorin doesn't want his entire bloodline getting destroyed, so he tries to go get Keely, which... Anyway. So, uh, Bilbo's still fighting with Dwalin, and all of a sudden, Bull comes out of nowhere with his giant fucking hammer and just bats him right in the face. and Done. I mean, that's what happened in the original book is they don't really tell the story of the Battle of Five Armies because it's all from Bilbo's point of view, and Bilbo's gone. He's just knocked out. He's just out. 
I like that the movie then expands on that. Oh, exactly. Tells you yeah. What's going on with all the different characters? And stuff. So and then well, they're all dead now, and this person's alive, and now it's over. Mm-hmm. And then uh, another people thing people hate is the um, Tariel and Keeley storyline. I thought it ended pretty good. Uh, Keeley pops out of nowhere trying to save Tariel, who's being attacked by Bolg. Mm-hmm. Ends up getting stabbed. Really sad scene. She she failed. She <laughs> she failed. Well, I mean, to be fair, she didn't have her bow. Uh, we skipped a little bit, but a part where she's trying to she's trying to oh, stop yeah. Thrandriel from leaving because he just said "fuck it, I want out." Slice, slice her bow. Yeah, so she has him held at bow point, and was like talking about love and everything, and Thrandriel's Which wife. Which normally, normally when like characters talk about love and stuff, I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't no, care it, it was good. shit. It was like not that bad. Actually. And then, but Thrandriel's wife got killed at the Battle of. Uh, Back, back to it was in like the the Baghdad place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bagaduel, Bag. Yeah. Goldad, Goldadad, Bagadad, uh, whatever. Bag-dad. Something like that. I don't. She I'm got too killed tired. in Baghdad. God damn it. <laughs> but she gets killed, and Thranduil never talks about her again. No burial, no anything like that. So, Tariel is trying to stop him from leaving and doing it all over again, and trying to save the dwarves because they're fucking outnumbered to the max. Yeah. It's. It's kind of brutal what happens with the dwarves. They're just getting slaughtered. Because the elves and the men went back to Dale to try to de- protect mm-hmm. all the, like, the women and children. And the dwarves are literally just standing out in front, just getting wrecked. Oh, man. There's... Yeah, I mean... Which dwarves? Just the the, 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 the Iron Forge. Iron, oh, yeah. From the Iron Hills, yeah. They're now, just getting wrecked. Did Mohawk Man survive? Dane, yes. Dane survives. Okay, cool. He's yeah. cool. Yeah, he's cool. I, I hope I want... Like, that's why I said the... I think there's an extended scene there. Because... Again, I'm getting ahead of myself, but... They need a Battle of Five Armies game. They do. That'd be sick. Now, the Lord of the Rings games are awesome. We should do a Let's Play. Though. We should. Comment down below if you want to see that. If you want that, and you're still watching this video... Damn, this is a long video. Do. It's 30 minutes right now. Shit. Alright, well, we should probably wrap up. So, anyway. Yeah. So, Keely Feely both dead. Kind of sad. Then there's an awesome battle scene with Legolas and Bolg. The thing that pissed me off was the running on the falling rocks. It's that cool looks, because it it looked really bad, but it looks really bad. They, so they so he's look at that. they they knocked a tower over and like the rocks are falling from underneath and Legolas is literally just bouncing on air. And Do you remember remember when he was on the elephant in the original trilogy and how bad it looked? It looked like that. it looked about as bad as that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it, it looked a little bit better, but it looked so stupid. Like it looks really dumb. Just when you see that part, just be like, "Fuck, I'm gonna ignore it." And then just ignore it. The way he kills Bolg. Was fucking sick. That was awesome. But he shouldn't have... Like, he just left his weapon in there and let him fall with his weapon. I would have taken it back. Like, he doesn't have a serrated edge. No, but any... he didn't. He didn't. He'd, he'd get it back later. He didn't have any weapons, though. He didn't need any more weapons. He the eagles are already that. come. No, the eagles are already come. Yeah, but there could be other orcs, you know, in the tower. He doesn't know that. No. They're all dead. Don't... Don't even... <laughs> so, and then... Then there's the fight with uh, Thorin and Azog, which was pretty good... Uh, you guys are gonna watch it and probably be like, why? That could have been avoided, but... Oh, God. That part. So, Thorin basically is an idiot and was like... I think it's... I think they wanted to go with the look where Frodo was, like, staring at the lake in the second one. And, like, it's entranced. Yeah, but at the same... I didn't... I didn't like it. I don't think that had anything to do with anything. Like, the the other one was, like, the soul... But, I mean, Thorin had to die. Like, it was part of the movie. He had to die.